All right, going to do a video here um, proving that Robert Breaker admitted that he is monetized. As I've been saying for a while, a lot of people have been questioning this thing, saying, is he monetized? Now, he won't directly come out and address it in the video. Uh, some people and all this stuff just being vague and ambiguous, as a good false prophet does, uh, don't have the guts to come out and actually name names and things like that. But uh, this email was forwarded to me of Breaker's response to the question, are you monetized? We're going to go over this email real quickly here. It says here, thanks for writing great question. Okay. I assume you are asking because a man named Brian Denlinger I, has attacked me for doing so. That's correct. Actually, several have attacked me for doing so. Uh, actually, more than several. There's quite a few. Uh, the body of Christ, those that are genuinely saved, will attack someone who is monetizing their Christian videos, making money off of the Bible getting paid by secular people. We'll get more into that as we continue. So I'll, have, I'll be happy to give you the skinny on that. When I started my YouTube ministry in about 2007, I did not monetize it first, and I didn't want to. I, I have questions on the thing of the 2007. I mean, I've been on YouTube since 2008, and way back when, they, they used to have YouTube groups, and there was a King James Bible Believers group. Um, a random 331, Matt Quigley was originally the head of it, and then he basically got the consensus of all the people that were in it, and they voted me in as the head of that Bible Believers group. I mean, it's, that was a long time ago. But uh, I think it was like right around maybe 2009 or so. But uh, I never heard of Robert Breaker. I mean, for years and years and years, I was part of the Bible Believing Movement. I've been part of the Bible Believing Movement here on YouTube and back and forth with a lot of the brethren. And things I never even heard of Robert Breaker until just recently. Whatever. But uh says here, but many other Christians kept recommending that I do so. I doubt that. So I well, the Christians that he runs with, his uh Christian friends. So I asked my wife and she said she thought there was nothing wrong with it. I then asked as many pastors and other brothers in Christ in order to find out what they thought about it and if they could give me any scriptures on it. Why did I do this? Because in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Well, you pick your counselors, you see. Um, I wanted to know what other Christians thought about it and if they thought it was good or bad. And I did not get one Christian minister who told me it would be a bad thing to do. They quoted verses like, okay, again, who are you asking? You pick the people that you ask. And I mean, the Bible is very clearly against it. I have proved it in one, my one study. I'll be talking about that in a minute. For the scripture saith, Thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treadeth out the corn, and the laborer is worthy of his reward. Um, who's giving you the reward? Lost people? The lost world? As I did in my study, you know, I had I had an envelope. I think it was actually this one. And I said, I said uh, some people came to me and they gave me this envelope full of money. So who are they? I don't know. Where'd the money come from? I don't know. Doesn't matter. My bills are, are paid for now. My, my needs are met. You wouldn't let me get away with that. You're letting a breaker get away with it. And this isn't full of money, by the way. It's full of a, it's a letter a brother sent to me. Um, actually, no, that's a, that's actually from the law firm. Never mind. <laughs> Closing for our property that we sold. But the point I'm trying to make is just saying, well, we get, I get money and I don't really know where it comes from. Just ads. Uh, no, 1 Timothy 5.18 and 1 Corinthians 9.14, the next one he quotes there, uh, those are about the body of Christ supporting a Christian preacher. The Lord places it in the heart of a Christian to give money to a ministry to see that ministry continue. I mean, show me in the scriptures where secular people were promoting and supporting financially saved people. Show me that one, Breaker. Continue. They all said that they thought it would be a great idea to monetize my videos as it would be a good way of helping to pay for the ministry. Okay. I took their counsel into consideration as well as the verses they gave and still decided not to monetize just yet and to continue praying about it more. I did this for several years. Why? If there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, I had to pray for a couple years before I decided to read the King James Bible. I just had to think about it for a while. What? If it's right, you do it. Okay? You don't got to pray about stuff. I really had to pray and consider that. 
weird. After I prayed about, I eventually decided that I would monetize in 2014, but I would only monetize the most smallest, least way that you could, as I've as I'd seen many videos which had ads, have ads all through them, and this is distracting. I did not want to distract from the message of preaching the gospel. Well, you don't have to worry about that, Breaker, because you don't preach the gospel. You preach a false gospel. Talk more about that in a couple minutes here. So I looked into how you could monetize in such a way that it would not distract from the message. What I found is that I could put an ad at the very beginning of the video, but that I could also put a tab in which people could skip the ad after five seconds. This is what I did. I added no other ads than that in order to not distract from the message. When I did that, I received email after email after email of viewers who said, Brother Breaker, we are so glad you did that. We wanted to support your ministry financially, but we don't have any money to do so. Now watch what he does here. This is incredible. So we greatly appreciate you you're allowing the ads because what we can now do is watch your videos on a loop and let them play all day long. This is how he wrote this thing. Knowing that when the ads play, they will give you some support, and that is our way of donating to your ministry. What a novel idea. This was their way of donating to me. That's illegal. You can't do that. You are artificially inflating your numbers. That's illegal. You're not even supposed to do that on YouTube. You're not supposed to have all kinds of people coming in and just looping your videos to make your view count go up so you get more ad sense. That is deception. It's lying. Do you not understand that? I mean, if you're one of Breaker's followers, you're brain dead anyways, that, you know, supports everything that the guy does, and he can just lie right in front of your face, and you go, I didn't see anything wrong with that, you know? But, I mean, look at that. What a novel idea, he says. Lying. They're lying. You didn't watch the video. You're not sitting there watching the video and things. But you're looping it and looping it and looping it. So it just keeps that view count going up and up and up and up and up. That's 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 just blatant lying and deception. And he has no problem. It's a novel idea. And this guy's saved. I don't think so. Many of them said that they don't even watch the ads and or simply muted them, but they let them let them play uh, the entire minute, knowing that will help my ministry okay so when something worldly comes up they they'll just let it play so that is why I've monetized again I don't want I didn't want it at first why not if there's nothing wrong and that is why I asked other Christian ministers what they thought I wanted to know if they could show me from the Bible if it would be wrong to do so not one of them thought it was a bad idea and many encouraged me to put ads all the way through my videos in order to make as much as I could these are the Christian ministries ministers that he's asking for their advice. And they're saying, put them all through. Make as much money as you can. I did not want to do this. And I did not want to distract from the message. I'm not interested in making money. Sure. But it is a blessing that YouTube is a platform in which you can get something back for what you are doing. So YouTube is the one that gives you your money, not the Lord putting into the hearts of saved people, the saved supporting a ministry. No, go to the world and have them support your <coughs> ministry. Right. Um, and the money I do get from the ads, which is not a lot, they all say that, helps pay for the ministry, such as websites, high-speed internet, to upload videos, etc. Further, I made it a point to do the very least amount of monetization that you can do, which, is, again, is a five-second ad with the option to skip the ad there. Okay, just real quick, I was watching a channel the other you know, week or so, some guy here in Maine, and he had bought some land up northern part of Maine where I'm at, and he was like off-grid cabin and stuff, and I was trying to get some ideas for construction projects in the future, and he talked about how he's monetized. Not a saved man or anything, he's just secular videos, whatever. I'm not going to judge a guy like that because he's just secular. And he said about, I mean, a guy had like maybe... I don't even know what, like 15,000 views or something, like on his entire channel. And he was like, I just got this, you know, AdSense check, my first one for like $100 or something. And I'm thinking, some guy that has like 15,000 views, you know, maybe a, a hundred, a couple hundred subscribers or something like this, and he's getting a check for $100. And I'm thinking, what on earth is a guy like Breaker making? 150,000 uh, subscribers 
and one video alone, almost 9 million views on his one video alone. And of course, realizing that his subscribers are artificially inflating his view count. It's not much money that he makes. Yeah, sure. I also recommend anyone who doesn't like the ads at all to install on their computer an ad blocker. Many people email me and say that they never saw an ad pop up on my videos. Upon further investigation, their computers had ad blockers, and that was why. So if ads offend you, please get an ad blocker. To me, it's not about the money. It's about the word of God. <laughs> sure. Now, with all that stated, I realize there are some people who claim to be Christians who want to attack me for having monetized my videos with just that five-second ad. That's fine. I don't feel bad about it. I prayed about it, asked advice of other Christians, and I've searched the scriptures, and I find no verses anywhere that says I couldn't or shouldn't do so. Okay, I got a whole sermon on it. Monetizing Christian videos is a sin. 45 minutes, scripture after scripture after scripture. What about the verse about you cannot serve God and mammon? Hmm? How about that one? No verses anywhere. You know, talk about the story back in... Uh, Genesis where you have the king of Sodom basically wants to give money to Abraham and Abraham's like no I don't want any money from you I want I don't want you saying that you made me rich I don't want your money it's all in my sermon scripture after scripture but you see I'm not one of the uh, preachers that uh, breaker would recognize I'm not in his little circle of friends you know so he goes to the other crooked lost con artists like him and they all say yeah man get as much money as you can Let's continue. Um, their argument is that I'm preaching only for money. What? I went to Honduras as a missionary on a very, very small amount of support for seven years and preached there. If I preached only for money, I would not have hazarded my health in such a way. Rather, I would have stayed in America. Okay, um, I was in Honduras as well on a mission trip down there. Right? There's a lot of American missionaries down there that live high on the hog. Okay, you can get down there and you can get a very, very nice, extremely big mansion out in the country for like 20,000 bucks. Okay, you can live very, very nicely down there. The people down there will come and act as maids and servants to you. Oh, yeah. Okay, I got to see it down there firsthand. All right, I don't, I'm not going to try to get in my external hard drive and things to show you pictures of me down there, but uh, I've been down there. You know, La Acequia was the town that I was in, um, capital city, San Pedro Sula. I was down there. I know about the uh, American missionaries that go down there to uh, suffer. Sure, Breaker, sure. Mm -hmm. Further, they claim that getting money for my videos will cause me to compromise. No, you compromise without money. You just, you're lost. You've seen my videos. Do I look like a compromiser to you? Absolutely. Lately, they say that it's evil to take money from an evil organization like YouTube, yet they use YouTube, using it but not taking money from it. What? If it's evil, why on earth are they on it at all? Their arguments don't add up. Um, you know, I go out to secular stores, okay? But the secular stores, if I went out to uh, some, like, say, Kmart, okay? Uh, I don't go to Walmart, but that's another story. But let's just say I go to Kmart. I walk in there because I have to buy a um, water jug or something like that for going camping. And I don't want to get it online. It's like I got to get it. I got to have it for the next day or something like this. So I go to Kmart and um, I walk in there and I walk in and Kmart says, hey, you know what? You're King James Video Ministries guy, Brian Denlinger, aren't you? Yes, I am. And they say, we would like to donate this to your ministry. You know what I'm going to say? No. I'd say, well, are you saved? You know, if the guy himself was saved and said, hey, I'm going to buy this with my own money to give this to you, well, that's different. But if the store is saying, we want to officially have you and sponsor you, you know, have you as our one of our spokesmen or something like this. I literally just got a uh, email this past week for a getthetea.com or something like this. And I know like Wittenberger, Paul Wittenberger, Anderson's a uh, film guy, uh, Hollywood film guy. He also like is hooked up to get the tea.com or something. I'd seen they're like one of his sponsors. And they literally said that they wanted to sponsor me, this get the tea.com thing. They wanted to sponsor my ministry. And I was like, delete. Not interested. I am not interested 
and having lost people sponsor me? Does that mean that I don't occasionally have to patronize their businesses and things like that? Well, that's life. That's that's being here on this earth. I mean, I got to drive down the roads, even though the state government controls and maintains the road and the state government does bad things. You know, I mean, the, the logic here is just insane. <laughs> but um, they claim we are to be separate from the world and not help secular organizations. Yet these men have some. Yet these same men have PayPal and take PayPal donations. One of the founders of PayPal was a homosexual. Sodomite is the biblical word there, at Breaker. I know you're not a Bible believer, but that's another issue. Why do they use PayPal then? If they hate the world so much, why do they use the worldly things for themselves if they claim they don't preach for money? Then why do they accept PayPal donations? Um, I never claimed I don't make a living at full-time ministry. I don't preach for money the way it's said here. But I never claimed that I don't make a living from full-time ministry producing free videos, you know, for people. And there are some people that say, I want to support that. Praise the Lord. Okay. But I, me using a financial thing, a financial, financial institution like PayPal, they're not paying me. Okay. Does this sink in? And just to show you, this is kind of interesting. Robert Breaker, Faker Breaker's website, right there, PayPal. You know, seems to kind of have left that out. He uses PayPal as well. You know, and what they take from it, they're taking money from me using their service of online payments and stuff like that. Now, could I go and find some uh, banking institution or something like that that does online stuff or Bitcoin or some other kind of deal like this or whatever? Probably that's not hooked up to the sodomite agenda or something. But again, I go and I buy gasoline for my vehicles. Well, I guess that means that I'm bad because I'm supporting Islamic terrorism or something. Because Muslim countries control the oil or something. It's insanity. It's not even close to being the same thing. Me having to use the things of the forms of this world is one thing. Them coming to me and wanting to give me money and support me and promote me, that's a different story. The Bible clearly tells us that we can use this the world as long as we don't abuse it. We read this here. And they that use this world is not abusing it, for the fashion of this world passeth away. Well, you're certainly abusing it, breaker. You know, they're they're coming out and they're they're promoting you. How is the world promoting me? How is the world promoting King James Video Ministries? So I find that in the Bible you can use the things of the world as long as you don't abuse them. Thus, these men who attack me are nothing more than self-conceited, self-righteous Pharisees. That cracks me up. Every lost person calls Bible-believing Christians a Pharisee. Every single time you run into a lost person, you start to press them on the things of the Word of God. You're a Pharisee. Funny how Breaker acts like a lost person. Because he is one. Who wants to look down on others and pride themselves on what they do, or in this case, don't do, while trying to make others look bad. Sadly, many of them need money. For their videos, they bewail and cry about how they aren't getting enough support. Uh, I didn't, I never did that. See Brian's video where he attacks me and says I'm a liar about the dates or whatever. Um, if they would just monetize, they might be able to make ends meet. I make ends meet just fine. The Lord provides for us just fine. I've seen it supernaturally so many times where we are, it's like we got some kind of major thing coming up or, well, you know, we do need some money and somebody will come along, the Lord will put it in their heart, come along and and help us out great keeps going and if this ministry ever gets to a point where it's not making money I'm gonna go back to the art world again okay you know I mean I'm just so desperate I'm just like this this leech on the body of Christ according to some of these people and it's like okay um, I could go back to a time when I was making you know a bowl a wooden bowl and selling it for four hundred to five hundred dollars in an art gallery you know and I left that to do this full-time ministry where people attack me all the time and, and, you know, say all kinds of ridiculous nonsense about me, you know, and this is somehow better than what I used to have. Like, okay. Uh, not to mention the fact that I can go back to logging, you know, which I used to do. I wonder what Breaker would ever do. You know, see, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this ministry thing as Lord, as long as the Lord provides, 
through the body of Christ, not through the lost world. And if the Lord ever says, okay, you know what? You're just casting your pearls before swine here. You know, there's just too many lost people coming along and stuff like that. Deal with the body of Christ some other way. Go back to the art world or go back to logging or whatever. I'm going to go back to it. You know, Lord's given me a whole lot of other skills that I can use to make a living. But, you know, because I choose to not burden the body of Christ with an immense debt of me having some really, really, really expensive home or huge, big, expensive ministry, because I try to live as simply as I can, you know, we, you know, we all, we live that way because we don't want to be a burden on the body of Christ. And that's me not providing for my wife. So I guess I should have some huge big mansion and stuff like that. Brand new vehicles and things. Then I'd be a real preacher, I guess, apparently. Uh, they would rather pride themselves upon the fact that they don't. The book of Job tells us that Leviathan or Satan is the king over all the children of pride. Well, how about a guy that never says that he's wrong, like Breaker? So I don't listen to these men or care what they say about me. I think it's great that God in these last days has allowed a platform for people to preach his word and be able to get a little something back for doing it. From the lost world! <laughs> you know, give me a break. It's almost like there's no excuse for not serving God in these last days. Lost people. He's literally saying that God is using lost people to pay his salary. I mean, show me scripture. Show me scripture where God ever said to anybody that's saved, Go into ministry and have the lost world support you doing it. It says here, because anyone could get on YouTube and do just that and have their ministry paid for if they uh, do what I did. I hope this answers your questions. I don't love money and I don't do what I do for money. Yes, you do. I do it for the Lord. But like my wife said, isn't it cool you can serve the Lord today and even the secular world has set up a system in which they will give you some ad money for doing it? She further said, that money has to go somewhere. Why not to the ministry rather than to evil people uh, to use for evil things? She just literally said here, the secular world, right there, secular world, they will give you some ad money. And what's he say? What a smart wife. <laughs> yeah, okay, I think you both need to get saved. In closing, let me say that the money I do get from the ads is very small, especially since I only do the five-second thing. It used to be a little more, but about a year or so ago, something happened, and many people withdrew their ads to YouTube. And since then, it's been ridiculous how little you get in ad revenue. Many of us, or many who used to live off of their ad revenue no longer can. It's so very little now. It looks like YouTube is really stealing from people, but it doesn't matter to me. Again, I don't care about the money, but I certainly don't want to take way people's opportunity to donate to my ministry by letting the ads play. I'll get back to that in a minute. They are happy they can donate in that way, so I will allow them to do so. Oh, you're such a sport there, Breaker. You're going to allow people who profess to be Christians to basically watch ads from the lost world. I'm going to show you one of the ads here in just a minute. Let the, the lost world, you know, pay you yeah but let's uh just show you a thing here like I said right there is my video you know monetizing Christian videos is a sin oh scripture and after scripture after scripture after scripture showing that it's wrong to take money from the lost world for the Lord's work okay you have a secular job sure of course your boss is paying you because you're doing work there sure secular job but to sell the Lord and to make money off it, like this. Check this out. Um, Sister Sally did this video here, showed this thing. His testimony of salvation. Okay, my testimony of salvation here. And it has ads from the Vatican playing at the beginning. So at least on this one video, he got money from the Vatican. Hmm. And I think it's interesting, too. Because you type in the, the thing, you know, because I'm not setting dates. I'm not setting dates. You come here September 23rd, 2017. Guess who shows up first? Faker Breaker. Right there. Click on it. Shut your mouth. Look at this. Eight 
1,911,561 views. It just was under 8 million back when I first started to expose this a few days ago. He's up almost a million views since the last time I did a video. But that's okay because it's his viewers just letting it loop and loop and loop and scamming. Not only is he getting AdSense, they're scamming the lost people, lying about his views. And he says, what a novel idea. Openly admits to being a liar. And, and again, look at the, look at the, the blindness. Okay, see, I want you to understand something out there. Lost people are spiritually blind. A lot of times they're professing things and they're not even able to see their own hypocrisy. He says, I'm not setting a date as he's standing there in front of a date. I'm not setting dates. September 23rd, 2017. It's, yes, it's, it's gotten that bad. And these people, you know, I show the video and it's like, one minute he says 1947, next minute 1948. And he, in both videos he said Israel became a nation in 1947. And he says 1948 in the other one. Israel became a nation in both videos. And then he has to come out and backpedal. And, well, 1947 is when the UN recognized it. That's not what you said. You said they became a nation. You had to change the date. And you lied about 1948 being a blood moon thing. It was 1949. You know, the whole thing is, uh, brother and sister in Christ out there, um, these people that follow this liar right here, um, the ones that really truly are defending him and things like that, um, if the Holy Spirit's not revealing, and I mean, because a lot of you, you know, I'm just getting just flooded with emails. A lot of you saying, yeah, you know, I, I was watching Breaker for a while, but it, like there just was something that's that's not right there. You know, what I mean, he does the whole acting thing, the yelling and the, and the, the voice and then, and then brings it down. And fake. He's completely fake. A lot of you just, you know, you feel like there's something wrong. And the more you see, all of a sudden you realize, yeah, OK, yeah, he's false. He's not genuinely saved. And look, you know, look at his testimony thing. I mean, you know. Look at his testimony. He put his faith in the blood. You know, it's, it's you know the faith in the blood thing and stuff like this. Let me show you what what the real deal is here on Breaker. Second Peter chapter two verse one. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Breaker, you're headed for swift destruction. And your self-righteous pride needs to be abased. You've been proven wrong. You've been proven to be a liar. And yet you refuse to back down. You're a liar. You are a false prophet. You come out and you say, I'm not prophesying a date as you're standing right below a date. You are that blinded that you can't see it. Your pride. Talk about a child of pride. And Satan being your father, Satan's your father, Robert Breaker. And anybody that follows you and defends your lying is also lost. I'm going to tell you that right now. The gospel that you preach is a false gospel. You take salvation. You say, it's faith in the blood. It's faith in the blood. And then you quote 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 9, which doesn't even mention the word blood. You know, it's kind of funny. It's like me saying... It's a faith in the imputed righteousness of Jesus. Well, you'll understand imputed righteousness after you get saved. Just like you understand the blood of Jesus Christ washes away your sins after you get saved. But lost people aren't going to understand that. Lost people understand, I'm a sinner. I don't want this life anymore. God be merciful to me, a sinner. You don't change your life until after your salvation. You see? But you're saying, I'm done. I'm not self-righteous anymore. And you cry out to God and you say, God, please save me. You see, Romans chapter 10. But you, like all satanic false prophets, have to go into Romans 10 and rest it and twist it and make it into something that it's not. You're a liar and you are deceived. 
and you are a deceiver as well. That's the sad part. That's the real, real frightening part. But you see, the body of Christ is waking up to you, Robert Breaker. More and more people are writing to me and saying, yeah, I used to listen to Breaker, but uh, no more. I'm unsubscribing. But uh, the sad part is there's a lot of people that are mocking Christians. Again, another false rapture date setter. Well, I'm not setting a false. The lost world doesn't see it that way. They see you as another Harold Camping. And you are. Maybe you're not making as much money as him, but perhaps you are. I don't know. But uh, it's just disgusting to me. But let's get back to the scriptures here. Second Peter verses two or chapter two, verse two. And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of tr truth shall be evil spoken of. Many shall follow their pernicious ways. 150,000 subscribers. By reason of, let me get the scripture here, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. You know, it's interesting to me that I've exposed Stephen Anderson. His followers come over and they will use profanity in my comments. And the same kind of thing happens with people that defend you, Robert Breaker. I get profanity in the comments. Kind of interesting. It says here, and through covetous shall they with covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you. Right there. Merchandise. When do you see a Christian getting that kind of views? Bible believers. I don't see it. I don't see Bible believing Christians getting this these kind of views. And this guy's got more subscribers than Steven Anderson. I mean, shouldn't that be a red flag? Shouldn't somebody kind of go, oh, that's a bad thing? He's got more than two times the subscribers as Steven Anderson. Steven Anderson has a professional Hollywood guy working with him, putting out professional quality videos. These quality, these videos are poor quality. I mean, when you see somebody that's being paid by the world and promoted by the world, shouldn't that kind of say, uh-oh, You would think so. Whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. Your time is coming, breaker. And I realize that uh, you've never been broken. You never come to the Lord in a broken, contrite, repentant spirit. You just in your pride said, I believe, you know, I understand that uh, the blood of Jesus Christ is there to wash sins away. I take it. I'm in. You decided that you are saved. There's been no supernatural change in your life. You're a liar. You're a deceiver. And until you break your pride, until you are abased, until you say, I'm a sinner, okay, a real sinner, not just the, the general knowledge of all, all of sin and stuff like this, like all good Catholics will do, you know, um, until you abase that pride of yours, you're going to go to hell and you're going to burn. And Bible-believing Christians are waking up to you. And, you know, you're going to make us look like fools again tomorrow, Robert Breaker. You're going to make us look bad again. Another false rapture date uh, put on the body of Christ. Because the body of Christ looks at you and they just lump you in with other Bible believers. But you see more and more of us are going to come out against you and speak against you. And expose you by name for the faker that you are.